Hey everyone, and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. We're starting this video off a little different as I'm not standing in front of the car anymore, I'm standing behind it. And that is all thanks to my new wireless mic system. And on a day like today, with it being very breezy, you can still hear me very clearly, and I don't have to worry about wind noise at all when I have to go to the editing. So, very happy about that. Now, let's get right into this video. You guys have been wanting me to do this video for about a month now. I mentioned that my GTI has passed 5,000 miles, and in that time of waiting and delaying, it's now up to 6,000 miles. So this video is going to be more like a 6,000 mile review. But I really wanted to make this video because I want to talk about what my thoughts are on the car, uh, whether I still like it after 5,000 miles. And if you are interested in buying a GTI, is this car the right one for you? Now, before I even start off with this, I want to apologize for how dirty this car really is. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but it's driving me insane. But it is my daily driver, so I'm not going to be able to keep it clean all the time. It's not going to stay in the garage, so that's to be expected. car will be cleaned by uh, the Cars and Coffee this upcoming weekend. But um, one thing I will say is that in the 6,000 miles of owning this car, it has been very enjoyable to drive, whether it's back roads or highway driving. Now, for me, I use this car for multi-purposes. So I use this car to get to car dealerships when I do reviews. It's my daily driver, of course, and I use this as a car to keep up with my friends. They're like my friends who own the GTR, GT3 RS, Audi R8. I've been keeping up with these guys, uh, even though they'll leave me in the dust when they accelerate. But this car has been used in different ways that maybe for some owners or some people who are interested in buying this car, you won't be using it for. So we're going to hold off on my enthusiast side of driving this car and focus more on the daily driving aspect. Now starting off with the interior because that's where you're going to be spending most of your time if you are driving or going to buy a GTI is the cloth plaid seat you'll get on the S and I think for the 2017 model year you could get as an option on the SE. These seats provide a good amount of bolstering. They're very comfortable actually. Um, for me when I'm driving a little aggressive on back roads it hugs me pretty well. Um, I will say that if you prefer comfort features you're going to want to go with the SE trim because with the SD, you're gonna get leather seats and you're gonna get a moonroof. And I find myself touching the console up here, hoping to open up a moonroof, and to my disappointment, it's not there. So um, in my opinion, if you do want comfort, go with SD or Autobahn. And one last thing up front that I wanna talk about is the leather wrapped steering wheel. Now for all Mark 7.5 GTIs, you get a different material leather for the steering wheel. And I didn't notice this until last week. Um, I had thought that maybe the steering wheel was going to wear out at some point. It's going to feel like the older GTIs that I had uh, tested out and thought about buying before I purchased the Rabbit Edition. Um, in the older GTIs, which I could not stand, it was one of the things I did not like. And I have friends that actually have changed the steering wheel because of this. The leather was very cheap, very hard, and it wore out very easily. Now, for tw the 2018 model year and all Mark 7.5 generations, the new leather they use is so much nicer. It feels so much better when you're driving on a highway or on a back road. It feels so much better. And the stitching, I think, complements the leather a lot better because on the older GTIs, what I would notice is that the stitching would stick out a bit and it would feel uncomfortable uh, depending on where you put your hands. So um, definitely if you're looking at buying a GTI, consider getting a 2018 or 2019 model year for the better steering wheel. Now taking a look at the side profile, we have to focus on the wheels because it won't matter what wheel you have, whether you buy a Rabbit Edition or just a regular GTI, trying to keep them clean is literally impossible thanks to the Golf R brake pads. Within about two or three days, you are gonna notice the brake dust accumulate on this car immediately. Um, I wash these wheels once a week and within about two or three days, they're already dirty and that's one thing I do not like about this car. However, the Pretorias look amazing on the GTI. And if you are looking at modifying your car but want to go with more of a stock look and you're just not sure what type of aftermarket wheels you want to go with, the Pretorias, I think, are a great decision because I could just imagine a red GTI, even a black GTI, if you want to go more stealthy, look really good on the car. And it really does give you that look of being aftermarket and modified. Um, I definitely like the Pretorias and they're actually one of the reasons why I did not uh, buy aftermarket wheels. I think the Pretorias just look good and that's something I do not want to change on this GTI. Now before getting into the driving portion of this review, I want to get into 
the practicality because I feel like if you are buying a GTI, practicality is part of the equation to go along with your sports car feel. I have plenty of room for my camera gear and also my detailing equipment or any other junk that I acquire um, while I'm owning this car. I have plenty of room for that and in my opinion, uh, this is one of the reasons why I did buy this car is that I have enough room for my camera stuff so when I go to dealerships or film videos like today, I have plenty of room for that and it's just an overall good car that if you are looking for a daily driver that's sporty and practical, the GTI is definitely the car you should be looking for. So there's a few things I have learned being behind the wheel of this car. One being the fact that it's very fun to drive on the highway and on back roads. Where it doesn't do very well is in the city, especially where I put my car in sport mode all the time. I never put an eco just because I don't want to deal with the automatic uh, start and stop. So uh, in sport mode in city driving, which currently right now I'm not in the city, but the car just waits to get into gear around 25, 30 miles an hour. And you're in this constant mode of having this car drone a lot. And it's just it's super annoying. It's because of the sports tuned suspension that I find myself just driving on freshly paved roads if I can. And also the highway because, well, being on back roads that have not been paid very well, it is very painful and just makes you want to cringe being behind the wheel. However, it's so much fun cornering in this car. Just throw it right in the corners, you have a lot of fun. And of course you have a slow driver in front of you that just completely ruins the driving experience. Overall, this is a very fun car to drive. What I would say though is that if you're looking for comfort, maybe the GTI isn't the right car for you. Especially where if you're in a, in a bad area with the horrible roads, you're going to be feeling the bumps all the time. And that's one of the reasons why I do wish this car had a dynamic chassis control, just like the other uh, vehicles in the Volkswagen lineup, because maybe you could just put the suspension in comfort mode or something, and you're not dealing with um, being you know, ha hassled or jostled around, and you can actually enjoy the drive even when you're not being aggressive. Now, I want to personalize this video before ending it. Do I regret buying a GTI? And I have to say, absolutely not, because being a Cornflower Blue GTI, I have had a blast with this car. It has been a journey. I've been able to take photos of it throughout the entire summer. And as a daily driver, it's a complete blast. In fact, I would say that the GTI is one of the best cars you can find at twenty to $28,000 uh, that you can have a lot of fun with, but also be practical as well. It's also economical. I get about 32 miles per gallon on the, on the, on the highway. And uh, if I go on the back roads where I don't encounter any stop signs or red lights, I've actually uh, achieved 35 miles per gallon. So this car is very, very economical, particularly on back roads and away from the city, which is what I enjoy. But what do I not like about this car? And there's two things, two main things I don't like about it. One being front wheel drive, and you're going to see exactly why in this clip. Bunch of baby, let's go. 100,000 miles on this car. 100,000? No, under 1,000. Oh. It's breaking still. <laughs> Now you give a car enthusiast launch control, and what is his first thoughts? I want to use it. Well, with front wheel drive, it makes launch control useless in my opinion, because you get nothing but tire spin. If I don't use launch control, I think my car is faster off the line. And that wheel spin in that clip was ridiculous. In fact, I felt so bad about doing that. I was like, I should have never done that. But um, it is what it is, um, I did get uh, a few laughs from friends uh, when I did that and it got shared around uh, in my group of friends. But uh, moving on, four cylinder engine. I don't like it. It doesn't sound that good even with an exhaust. The problem I've had with GTI is one of why I held off on buying one was because with an exhaust it doesn't really sound that good. It makes it sound like very ricerish and more towards any like a Japanese car. Um, that's something I don't want. Um, however, I could go with AWE touring or track exhaust, which would make the car sound a little bit better, uh, give it more of, of a tone, which is probably what I would do and will do maybe next year. Now, I also want to say that I've not experienced any issues with the car mechanically. Um, when it comes to stalling issues, haven't had that problem, even though I did make a video about how the GTIs are having stalling issues for the 2018 model year, haven't had any problems 6,000 miles in. However, one thing that I haven't seen anyone complain about, and I don't know why this is, and I can turn it off, 
But um, the pedestrian detection system turns on uh, at random times late at night if you're on a dimly, dimly lit road. And that's a little bit concerning because you start looking for people that are not there or bicyclists that are not there. And there was one time that, this, that the safety technology kicked in uh, three times on the same road, which is a little bit disturbing and concerning. Again, I can turn that off, but I do prefer having the safety technology because it has saved me two times already where someone cut me off in a rainstorm and the car uh, stopped for me. And uh, also there was someone broken down in the, in the second lane on the highway and the crossover in front of me didn't, uh, I couldn't see over the crossover. And well, the crossover braked hard and this car braked really hard for me and it saved me from rear ending those two cars uh, over the last two times. So um, safety, te safety technology, I love about this car. It's why I do like having the rabbit edition because you do get the safety technology, but overall really enjoyable. Have loved this car all 6,000 miles. And even its shortcomings, with it being not the fastest car out there, it has been probably one of the best decisions I've ever made when it comes to purchasing a car. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.